Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, inshallah, we'll uh, get started uh, with the program. And uh, before I really say much anything, uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Brother Masood to come and uh, recite some verses for us. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmanir rahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een Ihdina s-sirat al-mustaqeem Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Waladdaanin Ameen بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم رسولا من أنفسهم يتنو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم يتنو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد مبارك السلام just a few words on this last ayah this one is where Allah, the, the meaning is, indeed Allah and His angels send salat on or blessings on the Prophet And then the address is to the believers, O oh, you who believe, you also send blessings and peace upon the Prophet in abundance. You know, so, um, you know, like, if you want to be, usually when, when people are friends, they have something in common. Right? So, you know, doctors and doctors, engineers, engineers, whatever. Uh, and Muslims, as Muslims, we are friends, you know. And, and, but how do you become friends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He asks us to make salat. He doesn't make salat. He asks us to fast. He doesn't fast. You know, we do hajj. He doesn't do hajj. We do zakat. He doesn't give zakat. So how do you become friends with Allah? This is, this, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals that secret that he says, indeed, for sure, Allah and his message, and his uh, angels send blessings on the Prophet So, if we do the same thing, then we have something in common with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then if we do this in abundance, we become friends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. You know, and, and then, of course, on the Day of Judgment, Rasulullah said that the people closest will be to me will be the ones who sent the most salawat on, on me. So try to make it a habit, inshallah, and then do astaghfar that you didn't do the salat and salam the way it should have been. You weren't worthy of doing it, but still do it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Bye.
स्टार्ट करिए वो स्टार्ट करिए Alhamdulillah, and we are here to commemorate, to learn about, uh, to celebrate, you know, the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, the beloved of Allah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you know, actually, one of the verses that uh, was recited. Uh, was it start off with laqad manna Allah that for sure Allah has done a great favor ala al-mu'minin upon the believers idh ba'atha fihim rasula that he has sent among them or amongst them the messenger and ba'atha is to establish or you know ba'atha also the birth of the coming of uh, or uh, you know even the declaration of his prophethood Uh, and so all of these things are contained within this. So this is the great favor of Allah upon us, and so it's our duty to remember that favor and to uh, uh, celebrate, to honor, to respect that favor of His. Uh, and so, in relation to this, uh, I'm going to ask. Um, Mujib to come and recite some poetry. Uh, and I'll do partial translations on things. Uh, you know, he's going to recite some stuff in Urdu, uh, and so we'll do this until Isha, inshallah, and then Isha Salat, and then the talk, inshallah. So, Assalamu uh, alaikum. Everyone, please recite the Rishi. मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला फिर करम हो गया मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला कैफ साचा गया मैं मदीने चला कैफ साचा गया मैं मदीने चला छूमता छूमता मैं मदीने चला छूमता छूमता मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मेरे आका कदर होगा पेशे नजर मेरे आका कदर होगा पेशे नजर चाहिए और क्या मैं मदीने चला चाहिए और क्या मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला फिर करम हो गया मैं मदीने चला गुम्बद साब्ज पर जब परेगी नजर गुम्बद साब्ज पर जब परेगी नजर क्या सुरूर आएगा मैं मदीने चला क्या सुरूर आएगा मैं मदीने चला 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 साखिया में पिला मैं मदीने चला साखिया में पिला मैं मदीने चला मस्त बे खुद बना मैं मदीने चला मस्त बे खुद बना मैं मदीने चला 
मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला फिर करम हो गया मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला मैं मदीने चला uh, and this uh, basically the poet is talking about going to Medina Munawwara uh, and the the I guess the feelings or the emotions associated with going and, and to, to your beloved and talking about how the uh, talking about how the um, you know Emotions were over overwhelming when he sees the uh, green dome above the uh, Rodo, the resting place of Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. And so, Qasim, uh, uh, I'm going to ask Qasim to uh, recite a little bit as well, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Everyone, please recite Dushri. Muhammad Mustafa e Maharo par Maharai zami ko chho minne jannat se khush hu bar barai Muhammad Mustafa e Maharo par Maharai zami ko chho minne jannat se khush hu bar barai Bari ma yu se ti da yi ali ma jab gai makke Bari ma yu se ti da yi ali ma jab gai makke Magar aai to le kar do jahaan ka taj dar aai Magar aai to le kar do jahaan Chahaka Tajinarai Muhammad Mustafa e Baro Par Parai Zami Ko Chumine Jannate Se Khushibu Bari Barai Chanabe Amina Ka Chand Jab Chame Ka Zamane Me Chanabe Amina Ka Chand Jab Chame Ka Zamane Me Kamar Ki Chand Ni Kadmo Pe Hone Kon Sarai Kamar Ki Chand Ni Kadmo Pe Hone Kon Sarai Muhammad Mustafa e Baharo par Baharai Zami ko chumne jannat se khush bu bar barai Jadakullah khair Here the, the poet is saying that you know when uh, uh, Rasulullah Sassam is born fragrances from heaven came to kiss the ground uh, or the earth and that um, you know it's refer making reference to several uh, historical uh, events as well where uh, he talks about when Bibi Halima you know when Rasulullah was born and it was custom among the Arabs the city Arabs that they would send their children out uh, into the country side uh, to be raised because the air was fresher and the language is more pure. You know, when you're in a city, you get people traveling, especially in a trade city, you get people coming in from every place. Uh, and so there's a uh, mixing of languages. Uh, and so they would send their children out. And so when Halima, you know, Rasulullah, he was already orphaned when he was born. You know, his father had passed away several months before he was born. And so, you know, the women, they wouldn't ask for anything, but they would expect something in return for raising the children. So everybody felt that, oh, he's orphaned, so what will we get? 
and so when she came, she was the last one to enter the city, Halima, uh, because her animal or her uh, uh, donkey was so slow. Uh, and when she left with him, uh, she was the first to reach back to her place. And so it, uh, you know, so it says, you know, the poet is saying that, you know, she came and she, you know, she didn't simply attain a baby, but she attained the king of, of uh, both worlds. Uh, and, you know, various other references within that. Um, Jafar, I asked Jafar to come and recite some, inshallah. Assalamualaikum. Everybody, write some Bushri. Wa Jamalu Men Kalam Kulipta mubarram min kulli aibin Ka anna ka kad khulika ta ka ma ta shau Qumaroon, Qumaroon, Qumaroon Wajamil, 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 Sidna Nabi, Wajamil, Komarun, 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 Sidna Nabi, Um, 
and this was all in Arabic. Uh, but uh, the beginning of it, when he started, is actually poetry by Hassan bin Thabit, anhu, who is one of the companions of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there are occasions where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi or the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, would spread out his sheet and have Hassan stand and recite. Uh, you know, because their poetry was the media of the time. So that's how, you know, people would get their word or message across, uh, was through poetry. And so if you want to belittle somebody, you'd do poetry. If you wanted to praise somebody, you'd do poetry. Uh, and so, you know, of course, the enemies of Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi would do poetry to belittle the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the lovers of Allah and His Messenger would do poetry to honor the Messenger. So one time, one of those occasions, Hatham bin Sabit, he recited in front of Rasulullah sallallahu he said, وَأَحْسَنُ مِنْ كَلَمْ تَرَقَدْتُ عَيْنِي That uh, my, ha my eye has never seen anyone more beautiful than you. وَأَجْمَلُ مِنْ كَلَمْ تَلَدِ النِّسَاءُ And no woman has ever given birth to anyone more beautiful than you. خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّمْ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ You know, that you are created, uh, you know, without any faults, without any shortcomings, you know, no defects, not, no faults at all. كَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقْتَ كَمَا تَشَاءُ You know, as if you were created the way you yourself wish to be created. You know, if Allah asked you, how do you want to be created? Are you going to have any shortcomings within yourself? You know, are you going to put anything you know that that isn't good in yourself? No, you know, and that's why he's saying he says you are created without any faults, as if the way you yourself wish to be created. Hmm? Yeah, and so perfection. When we see Rasulullah, we see perfection in everything. Two words that describe him: Kamal and Jamal, beauty or perfection and beauty. Hmm? So he is perfect in character, perfect in being, in every aspect of his being, he's perfection. He is the definition of perfection. Yeah. And the poet, he starts off, Qamarun, you know, the full moon. You know, Sidna al-Nabi, Qamarun, that Rasulullah or the Prophet is like the moon. In reality, what he's saying is that the moon tries to emulate the Prophet. You know, but the similarity here is that, you know, if we look at the moon, the sun, you know, the moon, we look at the full moon and we see all this light. But the moon doesn't have any light of its own. It's the reflection of the light of the sun. And Rasulullah is the reflection of the light of Allah to us. And then, Wajamil, and you are beauty. You know, my, you know, the, my prophet is beauty. He is the definition of beauty. You know, anyone who ever described him would, would talk about, you know, they would say that if you saw him, suddenly you were in awe of him. Didn't matter who you were, everyone, whoever saw him was in awe of him. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at his, when they described his physical characteristics, they say that he was not too short, not too, not too tall. And which is interesting, and this is something that we don't, when we read this, we don't think about this. You know, the old saying of beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's true. You know, every mother loves her child. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created beauty within every child because they are innocent. But even, you know, when the child gets older, Every mother loves her child. And every child is very beautiful to that mother. Doesn't matter. Another mother might not consider that child beautiful. But the mother of that child says that this child is beauty again. You know. And, and the, you, you know, I could go into this scientifically about attraction and all of this stuff, but I'm not going to do that. You know, but again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So what may be too tall for one person may not be tall enough for another person. And what may be too short for one person may not be short enough for another person. 
And yet everyone who ever described the Rasulullah said that he was not too tall and not too short. Didn't matter who you were when you saw him, all you saw was perfection. You know, they say that his head is not too big and not too small. And you see some people, they're, you know, it looks like, you know, they've got, you know, a huge ball on, on, on very thin shoulders. And you see other people, you know, it's like, you know, you see this broad shoulder and you see this, you know, golf ball on top of it. <laughs> yeah? Yet for Rasulullah, everybody who ever, des again, described him said that, you know, even his head, it, it was just, it just, everything matched perfectly. This perfection. He is the definition of beauty and perfection. And then the poet continues on about, you know, about the hand and the smell of rose, uh, fragrance of the rose from the hand of Rasulullah, so some, which is actually one of the miracles that, you know, certain children that even touched, you know, that fragrance continued on into, into their lineage. You know, people knew where Rasulullah was, you know, they, they would find him simply from his fragrance. Not because he put on any fragrance, just the natural, his natural fragrance. You know, the, the, the uh, people of uh, uh, Medina, they would collect his perspiration because, and add it to the fragrance because they say that it made the perfume smell better. So if anyone wanted to find out where he was, they just followed their nose. Uh, so and many other things that the poets say. Uh, so I'm not going to continue. Somebody there, Shall I see. I see. Assalamu alaikum. Everybody, recite the Rashif. Uh, also, please recite with me. Um, Mawlaya salli wa sallim da'iman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kullihimi Mawlaya salli wa sallim da'iman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kullihimi Ya Rabbi bil Mustafa balig ma qasidana wa ghafir lana mama daya wa siyal karami Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kulli you are the Prophet of Allah, you are a shining light, enlightening us to the way and guiding us to the path. Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kullihimi. O oh, Muhammad, may there be peace and blessings on you. May Allah grant you as promised the maqam of Mahmud. Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kullihimi. There is no one like you, there is just no one the same. So merciful is your nature and most high is your name. Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kullihimin. 
Look at the heavens, the earth, the shining sun and the moon. When Allah made everything, He made it all just for you. Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayrin khalki kullihimim. The Lord has sworn by the beauty of the curls in your hair and by the nur on your face and by the clothes that you wear. Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayril khalki kullihimim. Look at Abu Bakr, Omar, Usman, and Mawla Ali. We love them all as they have spent time in your company. Mawla ya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayril khalki kullihimi. Ya Rabbi Bil Mustafa Balig Maqasidana Waghfir Lana Ma Ma Daya Wasi Al Karami Mawla Ya Salli Wa Sallim Daiman Abadan Ala Habibika Khayr Al Khalqi Kulli that one I don't have to translate, so that's easy enough. Um, this is known as Qasida. Qasida means uh, something said in honor of somebody. And most of the Qasidas are wrong, you know. And they carry a lot of matter in them. So if you read the Qasida of Musari he was sick and uh, he has some uh, what that, uh, the kind of uh, uh, skin disease. You know, huh? So he wrote this Qasida and then uh, that night uh, when he finished you know, that night of Sism came in his dream and with a sheet and a put on the sheet on him and in the morning he had that sheet on him and then he was cured, you know. So that was the kind of gift from Prophet Muhammad Sallam because he wrote this Qasida in honor of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The the first word says that O oh Allah continue blessing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and do it you know, continuously. He is requesting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam continuously. And he is your Habib. That means he is your beloved. And you have created him as the best of the creation. So he is requesting. Huh? So uh, this is what the, then the, he is talking about his uh, several characteristics, you know. So, even today, if you have love for Prophet Muhammad and you want to see him, you increase your love, and inshallah, he will come in your dream and visit you. Inshallah. So, uh, he's going on uh, for centuries, you know. People are seeing him in their dreams, he's giving different messages messages and telling them what is going to happen next and uh, the things of the future, you know. So, increase, and the best way to increase your love for Prophet is, as he said himself, that to recite Allah, say Salatu Salam on Prophet which is the command of Allah SWT in the Quran, in abundance, you know. So more you say, closer you become to Prophet Muhammad So, this is the key.
Ozbillah min shaitan ve jin bismillahirrahmanirrahim in our holy book Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ozbillah min shaitan ve jin wa amma be ni'mati rabbiku fa haddis when Allah gives you a ni'ma blessing fa haddis hadis means talk, talk about him tell people about him and this is what mean hadis If you don't think he is a nema, don't do it. And then you have to you have to answer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for that, because Allah says, "Kaha nema lakad ma awdilla min shadani dim lakad man Allah al mu'minin is baasafim rasulu minhum." Allah has done great favor. He has given you the greatest drama by sending a prophet who is from your own self. You know. So then the other place is the Amma Bene Matir Beka for Hadis. And when Allah gives you any name, tell people about him. You know, Hadis means Hadis, from Hadis means truck. And Uh, you know what we can do, condition we are in, you know. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu was created a long time before the creation of Adam. Billions of years ago, in the form of Noor. And then that Noor kept going around Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, kept, kept praising Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, glorifying Him. And Allah was pleased with his glorifications and his praises, you know. And he kept saying, Oh, my beloved, you are the objective of my, of my creation. You are the sole purpose of my of what I'm creating. We know that, uh, God had this saying of Ali and Allah, that there was Allah and nothing was there. There was Allah And there was nothing. nothing. And he was a hidden treasure, you know. He had the rabuvia, that means to take care of, the, of his creation, but he, there was no way to exploit the, uh, express this uh, characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many characteristics, characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is merciful, he is uh, uh, by himself, he is... Uh, he create, creates, no one created him. He has, you know, we have father, mother, and he has no relations, you know. He is just by himself. Uh, so, he, he, but all his characters, most of the characters were hidden. Because there was no one to appreciate those characters. When he was all alone, who was there? So he, he wanted to be known. He wanted to be this, then he created the creation. And the first creation is the Prophet, the Noor of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on 9th or 12th of Rabi or well, this is the month. And on the day, uh, mon Monday, uh, between night and day, you know, that means Fajr time. So neither night could complain to Allah, oh Allah, you did not give me this honor. Not the day could complain that oh Allah he did not give me. So he chose the time which is in between night and day. So he was born on okay, uh, that. And his uh, uh, grandfather, uh, his father, whose name was uh, Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he passed away before even his creation. So he was born as an orphan 
And I love the orphans, you know. And, and uh, then uh, his mother, Bibi Amina, you know, uh, she, she passed away when he was six years old. So at the age of six years, he became a Timut Tarfain. That means orphan from both sides, from father's side and from mother's side. So uh, at, the, uh, at, the, <coughs> at, that, at the age of 88, uh, his grandfather took, uh, took charge to rear him up, you know, to take, take care of him. Uh, they, then he also, no, no, he also passed away, grandfather. So when uh, father, grandfather was taking care, now he also passed away when he was eight. So you see this uh, sequence. Uh, when he was nine, he became, uh, Abu Talib, became his uh, caretaker. Uh, on, uh, then uh, from uh, the age of 13, he took the merchandise and he, and he showed himself as a merchant, and he was so honest and that, that and he took this the merch, merchandise of uh, baby Khadija, who becomes the wife later on. Now, in, when he was fifteen, his uncle took him to business uh, kind of uh, uh, caravan. And at that age, he also kind of made an association. Uh, he was the president, and Abu was the uh, uh, vice president. Uh, and the job was to take care of the poor and needy, and those who were oppressed. You know, so both of the you know they were, uh, Abu Bakr was the closest friend of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he was 30, 23 years old. He took the merchandise of Khadija, Radhi uh, and uh, when he took the merchandise of Khadija, she, she sent her servant Masra with him, and to watch how, uh, because uh, I, I think I'm, I might, I'm, that's my thinking, that she might have heard about other attributes of Prophet so she wanted to know, uh, get report, about him from his own servant, you know. So he was there. So when he came back, you know, he told his honesty and integrity and all this, you know. So she gave the message to, uh, to get married to, him, to her, you know. And at that age, she was 40 and she was widow. And the age of Prophet Muhammad was 25. And these Western, you know, all the kids, he married so many, you know, and he was this. Can you imagine that from 25 to 52, well, when she died, Prophet was 52, 52 years old. This is the age where a man who loves women can show his activities, but at the, after this, you know, there's not much love for that kind of, you know, for that game, you know. And then, it, so why Western people attack? And they never say that Solomon, Alayhi uh, Salaam had 300 wives, you know. They never, no one talks, you know. So, so many prophets are so many. That was the common thing, anyway. Uh, uh, from the age of 35 to 40, five years, he, used to leave Mecca and go to, go, go to a cave, you know, in the mountains here, and, uh, and meditate day and night, and think about this world, you know, what is the meaning of this world. So, and also getting the message in the same cave by through Angel, through Angel Gabriel, you know, at the age of, 40. Uh, when he was 
uh, when he reached the age 40 and he entered the 40, uh, first you know, year of his life, then the, of the life on this earth, then he declared himself as a prophet. And this is the common thing, you know, most of, uh, that uh, most of the prophets declare uh, the prophet, their prophethood at the age of 40. Musa Islam did the same thing, so on and so forth. And, but uh, when you see uh, Isa uh, Islam, Jesus, he gave the message of his prophet when he was three years, three days old. Anyway, um, uh, uh, then he, when he came back, uh, then, he, uh, then he started giving message, Khadija to Kubra, the wife. The wives know all the secrets of the husband, you know. So when he gave the message, she became Muslim right away. So she was the first lady to become Muslim. And then Zaid bin Haris, who, who was his servant, he also accepted Islam. Uh, Abu Talib uh, uh, you know, gave permission to Hazrat Ali, he, he also became uh, Muslim, accepted Islam. and. Uh, when Abu Bakr Siddiq came back from the uh, uh, trade mission uh, from from Syria, he uh, he will also become Muslim. So these people are called Abwalul Islam, those who entered Islam first, you know. Okay, uh, for three years the the mission was going secretly, you know. They will you know, tell you know. Because uh, the danger was if they declared their Islam, the families and the community of Mecca beat them up, and it happened. You know, some of them were torn to pieces. You know, like uh, 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 first martyr in Islam uh, from the lady side, and she was the slave uh, girl of, a, of uh, uh, Abu Jahl, and then he tortured him. The early Muslims, they went through such a, to a torture and punishment and kind of hardship that when we read, we start shivering. The, Abu Jahl kept with the lance, used the lance and kept pricking in her private part and saying, leave Islam, quit Islam, but she did not. And she died in that condition. No. The other one fellow, uh, Yasir maybe, Yasir, that he, his master, uh, they were slave, you know, these people were slave, who were, they tied one of his leg with one camel on one side, and tied the other leg with the other camel on the other side and said, I'm going to uh, make them run the opposite way and he'll torn to pieces, so quit Islam. So he spat on his. Uh, Yasir, Yasir uh, Ammar bin Yasir, he spat on his face and said, uh, I don't care, you know. And then he also said another sentence, that won't you wish that your uh, prophet was in this place and you were free? He said, uh, I do not want my Prophet to be picked by a thorn in lieu of my life. So the master, what he did, he uh, just uh, did what he was uh, saying, that I will make them run up with the side and be thrown. So, uh, so he, when he was thrown up to this, he said, you know, I, you know, how, you understand the picture? So when he was thrown up to this side, to chest, you know, then he raised his uh, head up, upside and said, Allah, give my salam to Prophet Muhammad Sultan and tell him that by, by the Rabbi Kaaba, by Rabbi Kaaba, I, I, am, I have become successful. And he was martyred like this. Now. So I stop here because it's seven, uh, uh, there's, other points to them, other, uh, no, his life, you know, uh, he lived uh, in this world, you know, for 63 years, and you know the 
when he declared he was he was 40. When he left the world, he was 63. In 23 years, you know, although with all these hardships and calamities and difficulties and torture, everything, Islam spread almost one, to the one third of the whole world. You know, Kaiser of Kisra, everything you know, came down. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Inshallah, uh, we'll make uh, Aisha Salat. Uh, so, uh, have Adhan and then Salat, and then after that, uh, the talk, Inshallah. Uh. Well, we're waiting on some people to make wudu, inshallah. <laughs> 